Hello everyone, my name is Rick Gurgitz. I'm the Complex Service Manager for the Red Power Stores. We're a group of 10 stores in Northern Iowa. And welcome to my series of videos on combine settings, adjustments, and basically just trying to understand how our combine works. So over the years of doing combine clinics, um, it's great to give out information, but there's a lot to go over on how to make our combine work correctly and make your harvest go easier and better results. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna take basically the contents of a combine clinic and I'm breaking it down into different sections. Um, we're gonna do a section on feeder, threshing, cleaning and sieves, automation, just breaking it down into smaller snippets. So we're gonna get them on YouTube clips that will be put on our company website and you'll be able to go reference those whenever you need to. Because again, clinic's great, and I, I love it when all you come because it's really good interaction, questions, and I learn a lot from you as well as the other way around. And I want to make it in a more usable format for you um, as you go forward. So again, if you get out in the field during the fall and you're having trouble remembering a segment, you can go to our website, pull up that particular YouTube clip, run through it, you can speed it up, slow it down, back up, do whatever you need to. And again, as we go along, I need the feedback from you of what I'm missing. I'm just trying to do a general overview of what I think you need. Um, but again, I can adjust the season to season if something new comes up and uh, add or subtract do whatever we need to. So thanks again for watching. We'll have, like I said, several different segments as we go through. Uh, this particular one, I want to address feed rate control, automatic crop settings, and automation. They're three distinctly different items. Um, that we would need to set up in the display, each having its own niche or purpose. So feed rate control is a system on 50 series machines. We've had it prior on 40 series and it did not work well. Uh, when we went to 50 series, total redesign of feed rate control and it works very, very well now. So we're gonna go through how we set that up in the display. And essentially what feed rate control is gonna do is it's going to monitor the load on the combine and control your ground speed according to what the load on the machine does. And that's just huge in a lot of regards, just that element in its own. Because if you think of it, as we're traveling through the field and our crop mat going into the machine varies, we need to maintain an engine RPM, which in turn maintains a separator RPM. So that's really the heart of any harvest operation. If we can maintain our separator RPM, you know, whether it be rotor RPM, sieve movement, all that, then the crop mat coming into it is gonna have a much better chance of getting a really good thresh and separation if we maintain that. If we're dragging the engine way down, our separator slows down, then we gotta build up speed, it might overshoot a little bit. So we kind of got a yo-yo effect that way. Whereas with feed rate control, it does an excellent job of maintaining our ground speed and crop input or crop mat size to where the engine is always under a steady load, separator stays at a separate, uh, steady RPM. So that helps us out greatly. The second element we're going to discuss is automatic crop settings. And it's really no more than simply writing down manual settings, does not adjust on its own. It's just a way of making a sticky note essentially with what your settings are so you can remember them if you're jumping between crop types. And we can even set it up to where we got one for early morning moist, late in the afternoon it dries out, we can set up a different set of settings, name it, and maintain it that way. So it's basically just a notepad system for automatic crop settings. Third item on the list is automation. And that's where we're gonna set the machine up, begin on the display, and let it adjust different things as we're going through the field as it sees fit due to whether it be from crop loss um, or crop condition. There's some different ways we can set it up and how it works. So um, just an overview of the three items we're gonna discuss in this segment. Um, we're gonna jump up in the cab now where we sit and see the display and we'll go through how we set these three things up. Okay, so now we're in the cab and we're gonna run through those three segments. Again, feed rate control, automatic crop settings, and automation. As we look at our home screen on the display, we really only have icons for two of those choices. The feed rate control is integrated into the automation tab, and then we have a separate one for automatic crop settings. So let's break them down. We're gonna go through feed rate control first. 
where we find our list backup, how do we activate it, what's it doing? Again, this is basically a cruise control for the combine, and it's going to get activated off of a button on our mole function handle. So this is the button that's going to activate feed rate control. It's got a combine with kind of a little speedometer right in the center of it, right above the auto steer button, a uh, little divider in, the, in between them. Pushing that is what's going to activate feed rate control once we have it established. So to set up feed rate control, we're going to go to the automation tab. And I need to step back one sec. All of the 50 series combines will have this button we were referring to on the multifunction handle. There are a few early 50 series combines that will have the button, but did not have feed rate as an option. So if you haven't had one of those machines, unfortunately, um, we can't really upgrade them to activate this again. But the way you know if you have it is when we go back here and we go to automation and we go to the basic tab, this is where we're going to set up our feed rate control here. So essentially it's going to have a strategy, a what we want our speed to be, and then engine load, and then we've got to go to another tab to get sensitivity. So let's start through this. First things first, and it's the same whenever we're setting up, whether it be automatic crop settings or automation or anything, we want to get our crop type selected. So here we got soybeans, and we want to get our, our own work condition for the year. So we're going to select, or we're going to start a new one, and we're going to name it something that we can remember easily. This one, I'm just going to go beans 2024. There. So now as we remember all these, it's going to be remembering that particular work condition. So once we have that established, our first choice is going to be what strategy do we want the feed rate control to function under. Now these will mimic when we get into the automation section, they mimic this, but we have to, if we just want to use feed rate control, and that's a very important part, is you can use feed rate control just with manual settings, with automatic crop settings, or with automation. You don't have to have all of them. Um, but we do set it up through the automation tab. So first one being, which strategy or thought process do we want it to follow? Why? Well, and I have found that by far the best one has been max throughput. Now that may sound a little uh, overwhelming, max throughput. It doesn't mean the machine is going to be running at full tilt all day long. But what that does do is it gives us all of the parameters in the machine when we're setting this. So if we choose one of the others um, as performance, what can happen is if it sees grain loss, it's just going to immediately slow the combine down first, which isn't always what we need to happen. And again, we don't want grain loss, but just slowing the combine now, down might not be the best option, um, especially if we're using automation. Automation should be able to jump in there if it sees loss and change some machine, machine settings as we go to take care of that. So what we really want, we're just going to go with max throughput. And what that does, it's going to look at two parameters to determine how fast the combine is going to travel. First going to be engine RPM, or engine load, and then it's going to look at the uh, pressure in the ground drive hydro system. So how hard is it pulling it, whether we're going up a hill or in soft conditions or whatever. So we select max throughput. Target max ground speed is whatever we're feeling comfortable with harvesting at. So let's just say we're cutting beans and we want 4.2, we'll say. That's where it seems like it cuts good, everything works well. It's going to try everything it can to maintain 4.2 mile an hour. Third item we select is max engine load. And typically I have found the best results at 105. So this is a calculated engine load and it can go up to like 115, but I have found this to work the best because it's just starting to work the engine good and that's when it starts dropping our ground speed down and maintaining that RPM, that load, and also then maintaining our separator RPM. Um, this has been working really good, whether we're in oats, soybeans, corn, or whatever. I have still found these to be pretty universal. Again, your ground speed is going to vary depending on head size, crop, uh, yields, and those type of things. For whatever reason, when they design this, there's one more thing we need to set. Why it's not right in this area, I don't know, but we have to go over to the sensitivities tab. 
and it's asking us how sensitive do we want the feed rate control to be. And if we hit the drop down, we have very many, or a lot of choices. I have found that high works the best for the sensitivity level of it. And again, that's on a separate tab. We're back here on basic. We're setting up all these items, whether it be the strategy, whatever speed we want, and our ta uh, engine load. This sets it high. Once we get these items set, it should all be remembered to that particular work condition. So that's really all we have to do for that. So from that point forward, all we need to do is engage the feeder and separator. And once we have those running and we're moving into the field, we're gonna move our hydro lever ahead. And whenever we hit our engage button, again, on the multifunction handle, it's gonna to try to work us up to that speed depending on the load of the combine. Once we activate this button, this item up here that's grayed out is gonna turn black. We're gonna show the target speed right here. So this 4.2 will come up here. And then this speed is gonna give us our actual. So let's say we're in a really heavy crop and it's only letting us go 3.8. It would display 3.8 here. We would still have our 4.2 over here. And as we're moving through the field, as the load decreases, it's gonna walk us up to that particular speed. So again, feed rate control basically set up on this one screen. We engage it with this. The handle can be anywhere you want in the quadrant when you hit the engage button, and it's still gonna work towards our target speed. Um, so that's also a point if our handle is, we're just barely into the quadrant and we hit that, it's gonna walk us up. It's not real abrupt, it's fairly gentle. Um, same token is if we want to deactivate this for whatever reason, Maybe we're making a turn, whatever. Just bump your the handle a little bit. Simply clicking the feed rate button on the multifunction handle will not disengage it. The only way you really disengage it is by bumping your handle a little bit, and that will knock the RPM down again, or I should say, the speed back to where you're controlling it by um, the handle. The other question is, well, what goes on when I'm trying to dump on the go? Well, it will lock a speed in if you hit the engage button or the unloader engage. If we're having to, let's just say again in our scenario, we're set at 4.2, let's say we're traveling at four mile an hour when you get ready to unload on the go, it'll lock it in at four. Um, and try to maintain that. I don't particularly recommend that. What I've told or trained all my customers to do is when you get ready to dump on the go, bump your handle a little bit, it'll beep, it'll kick out a, a feed rate, this will turn gray versus black. You're back in control when you're dumping on the go with your handle. That way if you need to chase the cart or the cart's getting ahead of you, you can zip back and forth, do whatever you need to. Once you're done dumping on the go, just reach up here, hit the feed rate button, it'll engage and go again. I just feel that's the safest way when we're dealing with a cart. So that's kind of just a quick rundown of what we got going on for feed rate control and what it can do for us. So feed rate control here. One thing I don't want to confuse this with is, again, we get to adjust with our high-low system first and second, we get to adjust how fast our quadrant is set up here. That's totally separate from feed rate control, but it does uh, enter or overlap a little bit. If we go back to our main screen, toolbox, and then drive, and then we scroll clear to the bottom once this boots up. Oh, and I should point out too, there is a second place for the sensitivity of feed rate, and that was back home screen, toolbox, and drive. It is also listed there. Um, here's where you can also check to see if you have feed rate installed. Um, is the second place there. But what I wanted to point out here more than anything is our max and low drive speeds. So when we're in first gear, our range right now is 3.1 is the fastest it would go on the low side of first gear. So we probably want to bump that up there. We're going to take that up. Let's go back here, about seven and a half. So that means in low range, first gear, stick ahead. The fastest I can go is 7.5 right now, which is fine, that's typically where we want it. If we go to the high side, the light comes on, high side of this, our max is 10.7. 
So again, the only way this would affect feed rate control is let's say, we'll go back, we're set up in this scenario to go 4.2, as fast as we can go. If we go back here into drive, and let's say this is for some reason set way low, right there, let's just say 3.9, your feed rate control will never go above this or this one's set. Um, and that's why typically we're going to set this somewhere up in this area. There's 7.6. Um, so it won't ever affect how fast we're trying to travel that way. But again, separate from what feed rate is, can affect it if it's set too low, but the high side's not going to bother it then. So, so one thing I did like to point out about this high low range thing is where it's really nice and handy is let's say you're pulling out on headland and you got to run down to a truck to dump, carts full, whatever the scenario is going to be, and you're already stick ahead and you're going to 7.5 rather than going and adjusting that range again, simply all you do is you toggle between the low side and the high side, and it's gonna take you up to your 10.7 then. So it's kind of a handy feature with the new layout of the two-speed transmission and a an high and a low. You can simply toggle back and forth to get your speeds. Um, if you go the other way, if you're stick ahead at 10.7 and you toggle back to the low, it is gonna slow you down somewhat abruptly, um, so just be aware of that. But very handy feature, just and that and on its own, but again, separate from the feed rate. All right, so our next segment we want to move into, we're done with feed rate. Again, it's controlling the speed of our combine by the load on it. We're going to go into the actual settings of the machine, and we're going to go with the basic route, and we're going to go with automatic crop settings. So once we're in here, we look at this, and oh, look at this, we're all grayed out. Well, we do have to turn it on, or you may have to, I should say. And again, it's going to be back in toolbox, electrical, and here's where we turn on my crop settings on or off. Once we've activated it in here, we go back to on my crop settings and our tabs are no longer grayed out. We can start working with what we have. So again, Automatic crop settings is no more than a sticky note to help you remember where you have the machine set, and especially when you go from year to year. It is not going to change the settings on the go. There is one place where it can change them if we don't remember to save them, and we'll go through that. But what we're going to go through first is just how we're going to set this up. And again, we select our crop type. We have a work condition that we have set up that we can remember what it is. And we may do one of these, it's called Beans 2024 Wet. And we may have another one, Beans 2024 Dry, just in case we're different types of crop conditions we might run into. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and just predetermine what do we want everything set at. We can do fan, the sieves, we can do rotor speeds, concave, spreader, veins, everything on here. We can predetermine what we want. So let's just go through this. Fan speed, I think I'm going to take to 1050. And what I want to point out here is suddenly now we have, instead of a green check mark, we have a red exclamation point and there's a differential. So basically this is saying, hey, this is what we had set initially, but you have just changed it. If you want to keep this change, we need to go up here and hit the save button. The arrow pointing to the right is a save button. And if we hit that, beeps at us, goes to then a green check mark and it says, hey, this is what you've now selected. So it's no different than if you had your settings set or written down on a sticky note and you scratched one out and you wrote a, uh, wrote a new value down. Um, so basically that's what that's doing. So we've got some pretty straightforward settings in here, upper sieve 16, lower 14. We can set a pre-sieve at eight. And again, every time we go on, that's what they're gonna be at. Um, a rotor speed of 670s. So concave opening, I'm gonna bump it up to 18. Oops, went too far, there we go. And again, I got an exclamation point, but I'm gonna go hit that. It's now save that. Our spreader speed, we're gonna ramp this up. 520, well, let's go a little bit more. There we go, we'll hit enter on that. And veins, I'm gonna go at 65. And again, we got some exclamation points. We hit save. We 
got our fan speed, sieves, rotor, vanes, everything's adjusted now. So this is our settings now for Beans 2024. Every time we shut on and off, this is what it's going to go to. But let's say as we're harvesting along, we've decided, and again, we've got everything set, we decided, well, I think I got plenty of rotor speed, and we slow it down a little bit. Again, we're going to say, well, I do want to save this. And there we've got our settings saved again to what we're doing. So how does this look back on our run screens then? So essentially everything here is set up this way. Okay, so this is kind of the overview of what it's going to look like on our run screen then. We have some shortcut buttons up here that I'm going to demo to you here in just a little bit that if we change something on a setting with while we're harvesting, we can save it right up here. Um, this will let us look at what we've currently got and then we can hit the green check mark. So this is our automatic crop settings, where we're at, just so if we want to review, and then if we want to get back to the run screen, you hit that, we're back to the run screen again. So we'll fire the machine up a little bit and we can look at how all this looks then. Um, so now that was on my crop settings, and again, we can set as many of those up as we want off of the icon. We can do whatever crop type we are, put whatever setting in there you need, and it'll remember it between the years. It's a very, very handy feature for this. Now, this does go back in time. Um, 30 and 40 series machines will also have automatic crop settings. Um, they, they won't have the feed rate control um, or the automation, but automatic crop settings is somewhat universal back. We used to have some more issues with it switching settings on us during key cycles, but that's pretty well taken care of now. Um, as long as we like to remember what's going on or hit the save button, uh, we're in good shape. So now we're going to move into automation. Automation is a whole different ball game. Uh, it's the system that's going to make changes as we go. But there's a couple things that go on here. Automation has its own tab. Kind of looked at that before when we we're setting up feed rate. But if we go back, we have to activate a button in the upper right panel. So to activate automation, we have a headliner switch up here. And we have to, it's the combine with the auto in it. And we're going to flick that on just like that. And that actually brings the automation on board then. Um, again, don't get confused. There's our auto guide button up here too. We have to use that to activate auto guide. But we're down here. It's the combine that says auto in it um, versus the auto in the steering wheel. That's the difference between those. So once we've activated the headliner button and we come back down to our screen, we notice as we've activated our switch up there, we notice something's changed here. All of a sudden, our layout's a little different. Automation's not down here by itself. And the reason being is when we activate automation, automatic crop settings gets put back on the sideline. So let's do this again. We'll flip this button and boom, we've got automatic crop settings and automation. You'll also notice up in our little combine that we have a number one inside the little harvest indicator, which is telling us that we're on automatic crop settings. If we touch our button in the headliner, you notice it goes to A, which tells us it's an automation, and the ACS button is temporarily gone. So we're gonna run automation, we're going to bring it up here, and lo and behold, we start with our feed rate screen, which we've already got set up um, because we did that prior, but everything's still there. We're on soybeans. Um, we go here. We're looking at some thresh settings, and what we want is we're going to use current setup. So what I always recommend to everybody is we're going to set our machine the old school way, uh, and that's where we're going to use settings that we're familiar with or initial settings out of the server, our operator's manual. We're going to get the machine running to our satisfaction, get our losses where we want. Then we're going to go in and tune automation to help us. I really don't recommend trying to let automation adjust the machine for you out of the gate. Um, and that's why we're going to use the current setup. We're going to have it adjusted off of automatic crop settings, have it saved there. Then we're going to let automation come into play and help us out a little bit. So adjust frequency again, medium thresh. I usually go with a medium in the middle of the road. Max rotor speed, I'm going to say is probably closer to 750 for second gear in soybeans. Sieve load configuration, we're going to leave off. I'll touch on that later. Um, haven't been real impressed with it, what it's showing us yet. 
So with our sensitivities here, we can't really do much initial setting here because they're really going to get dialed in when we're back running in the field off of our loss funnels here across the bottom. That's where we're going to get the majority of our, um, we're going to fine tune all of that. So back on this tab, um, not going to be too worried about it. We've got our sensitivity set for the um, feed rate already done. Headland, we're going to leave these all at zero offset. The thought process behind headland changes is when we're swinging around on the headland, we can do just what it says. Uh, we can change our fan speed and we can change our sieve settings. Again, I highly recommend not using any of this. Maybe the fan, if anything, we could do, uh, we're going to slow the fan down, we'll just say right there, um, when it's in headland mode. Um, because the reason I don't like the sieve ones is if we're hammering around on the headlands pretty good speed, these are never going to get changed and back to where you want them again by the time you get turned and back in the crop. It just doesn't work quick enough. Um, it was a nice thought at the beginning, but doesn't do much good. The fan will ramp up and down quickly, so we can change fan speed if we want to. Um, there is one caveat to that is really we need to be using shift resume for a true headland turn because again with resume if we're just using set point one and two the, the system is set up to where you've got two infield set points and a true headland turn is using the shift button on the back and then resume and that's where the headland mode would really kick in then. This is just kind of an overview of what the machine is equipped with. Ranges, this is an extremely important one. When it comes out of the gate, they are off. We're going to turn this on. Yes. So what this is doing is we can go in and we can fine tune what we want automation to do. Automation on its own is a very helpful tool. I find it to work very well in soybeans and corn. There's one area it's a little bit weak. I will point that out kind of as we go through it. Um, but as long as we set up ranges, it does a really nice job in the other crops. Corn, it's good. So again, our strategy, they give us four choices in automation. We can look at just grain quality, which is highly grain camera focused. Performance is kind of a mixed bag where it's looking at grain quality, losses, and then of course our max throughput is more concerned about the engine RPM and load on the hydro. Fixed throughput to me is somewhat of a silly idea because let's say in many cases we've only got X amount of trucks and we can only haul, haul so many bushel an hour away. You can go through and fix throughput and set up how many bushel an hour you want to get out. But what I recommend is rather than doing that, is we're going to do all of that. Oops, let me get it here, right back here. If you know you can only get X amount of bushel an hour out and you don't want to be parked on the headland waiting for a truck, change your mar your target max ground speed down to where you're getting that amount of bushels done rather than trying to get the automation system to monkey around and try to catch up with that. So again, back on ranges, I, my preferred one by far is max throughput because the automation should take care of the rest of it. Again, if we got a consistent engine RPM and a consistent separator speed, it's not going to be that hard for the automation to take care of the rest of it. So what we're doing by ranges, and we're going to start with a fan, we can set a min and a max. And typically in soybeans, I'm going to say a min is probably going to be 900. 1100 is okay for our max. Pre-sieve, I don't want it moving. And see, this is what some time of, they've got some predetermined ones in here. To me, this is extremely dangerous. I don't want my pre-sieve moving around. I might let it cruise around a little. Eight to nine, because again, if you think back to our older machines where we had a manual pre-sieve adjustment and we were on notch three beans, notch four corn, there is no need to be trying to move that because anytime you're monkeying around the pre-sieve on the go, you're asking to get grain in the clean grain fan, which is always a no-no, can lead to a nasty failure. So that's one of the downfalls I've always thought of automation is you're trying to move the pre-sieve around. It does not need to be, it has a specific job. Um, I am gonna be filming a segment on sieves and how we adjust them. We'll kind of delve into that a little deeper. But for the point of this on automation, we're gonna lock our pre-sieve down to where it's not moving much.
Same way, upper and lower sieves, we're going to let them walk around a little. There shouldn't be need for it to move very far. Um, typically, 15 to 20 should take care of us on beams. If it needs to adjust, it can work within that range. Same way with a lower sieve. Um, that's way too tight. I'm going to say 12, 17. I can live with that. Uh, actually, I'm going to take that to 18. We're going to give it a little bit of room to walk around there, but we don't want to get too carried away. Rotor speed's a very important one. That's probably a nice range for soybeans, 550 to 750. We're going to let it walk in between there, depending on what it sees for loss and conditions. And our very important one back here yet is veins. And see, this is extremely dangerous in my book. I want to set this probably at 50. And here, I typically never go max. 50 to 90. Um, and again, we'll talk about veins a little bit in another segment. But this is a nice enough working range for our veins for soybean setup. And again, we're going to go through and do these for corn, or you would do that also, um, where you set those also. But again, kind of an overview. Again, with ranges, we're telling automation, okay, you go do your thing, but you work within the boundaries that I put in there. And that helps contain it a lot from what it's doing. So again, we're looking at our crop type, um, soybeans, we're going to have it named, and it'll remember it to that then, um, our strategy, threshing condition, and all that. Again, we're back tied to that beans 2024, so anytime we go turn the automation on, it's going to grab that again. Sensitivities we'll deal with after it's running. And our ranges, that's the important part of this as we look at, again, we've been working in this automation tab. We're going down the line here. Uh, basic was our feed rate. Um, advanced, kind of we tune up a little thing. We want current setup um, because that's going to use the machine settings and we work through the rest of that headland. We're only going to slow the fan down. And again, we've got our ranges set up of what we like. The last one is just an info thing of kind of telling you what your machine is set up with. So look at, let's look at some scenarios now. Um, let's say we went to the field, we adjusted our machine to our satisfaction, and I'm going to turn automation off temporarily because we're back to automatic crop settings and we're humming through the field. Again, look at our, we've got our crop type, our work condition. We've went through and we've got our machine working just the way we want it to. We're happy with our losses. When we look at our funnels, we've got them adjusted. And again, I apologize without having crop running through it. I can't do much with these. Um, we can physically change what this is doing. And I guess we can talk about this a little bit. Basically what we want with the funnels is you don't let the funnels tell you how to set the machine out of the gate. Get your machine set. It's going to require getting out, do some loss checks. Once we have everything humming the way we want it to, we're going to go in and adjust the sensitivity on these where it needs to be to where we have a little bit of green in our funnel. Then, as we're harvesting, if something starts going amiss, then we're going to start filling the funnel. We're going to know, hey, I know I had machine set correctly before. Suddenly I got more loss. I need to start figuring out what's going on. So that's kind of a quick overview. This is rotor loss. Um, this is broken grain, again off the grain camera. Uh, tailings. Uh, mog, this is just again a grain camera function. And here's our sieve loss. Those are the basic icons that we've got um, across the bottom. So we've got rotor loss, broken grain, tailings, mog, sieve. Uh, these two are off of the camera. And again, it can be a benefit. We can usually look in our grain tank and get a good, pretty good idea. But again, we've just got our basic settings up here. So as our scenario carries on, we're harvesting away. We like everything. We were in automatic crop settings. Everything is saved. We got all green check marks. So we want to go to automation. Well, really all we do, if we have this set up ahead of time, like we just did, all we have to do is reach up and hit the headliner switch. And it's going to grab automation. And when we got load in it, we again, we switch from an, a number one we got a one up here, we know we're in uh, automation, or excuse me, in automatic crop settings. And if we go to automation, we get an A up there. It tells us that. 
if we go back and we have a one that is flashing, it's telling us that we have changed a parameter in here and it doesn't match up. So it's saying, hey, just be aware you changed something but you haven't saved it yet. So quick overview there. And again, if we want to switch this back and forth, you can do it however you want. If you get into automation and decide, you know, I don't know if this is really working the way I want. I know what was working beforehand. You reach up the headliner, goes back to one. You're going to go back to essentially what we're going to call manual settings that don't change on you. So again, works very well in beans. In corn, I need to step back. What I have noticed in corn, and I've had some counterparts tell me the same thing, um, for whatever reason in corn, I have noticed the sieve loss sometimes walk up on me and it doesn't change anything. It's like it kind of gets brain scrambled a little bit for a while. Um, so in other words, just say our scenario, let's just say we've got our upper sieve and we're at 20 and we're starting to see a little sieve loss and it, the funnel walks up and it just sits there. Well, if you reach over here and manually open the top sieve a couple clicks, suddenly the funnel will drop back down in the green and you can the automation seems to take off again so that is the one caveat i've noticed i want you to be aware of is i have found sieve loss to struggle sometimes in corn i've not noticed it in beans um, the only other secret i can tell you in beans i have seen is when we set this up down here. So let's say I have seen, and I, for whatever reason, I think it's another little flaw in beans. We've got 550 set as a min and 750. I have seen it walk through our low range for our rotor RPM, and I don't know why. Sometimes it'll walk down maybe to five and a quarter, whatever the case where you've got things set. That's the second flaw that I have seen in automation. Not the end of the world, usually doesn't really affect what we're harvesting or propel any losses, anything like that. I just don't totally understand. I've reported these uphill, but I don't think we've got any changes in the software to help us with that. But that's two things I've seen, one in corn, one in beans. So what we're going to do now is we've kind of went through the basics of this setup. Um, I'm going to fire up the machine and we can show a few things of how it looks. Again, we don't have crop going through it, but we can drive around and see a little bit and can kind of understand what's going on that way. So now we've got the machine running, uh, separator feeder on. We're pretty much matched up with our settings that we had in automatic crop settings. And we can vary a little bit because we're not have a load machine. Um, but you can see a number one here, everything's happy. It tells us that we're automatic and everything is set on the machine. It's the same as what we've got in automatic crop settings, which again was back here, our predetermined amount values. So let's try this. Let's just say we're going to work on concave opening. So let's just say our beans are a little bit tough yet. We don't think we're getting them threshed. We're going to close our concave setting a little bit. Should change that number. Again, we're on the go. And we're just going to go down. We're going to go down to 15. So we've grabbed 15, but notice what happened. All of a sudden, our number one is flashing. So it's telling us that, hey, it's not matched up from where we're at. Um, we're back to 15. So what we can do, if we want to determine, yeah, this is where I want to be at, again, we just reach up here, saves it, our number stays solid now. So we've got everything set up that way. So again, that's our automatic crop settings. So now we're going to add one more aspect into it. We've got, we're in um, automatic crop settings. We have a number one up there. We're traveling 2.5. We're going to kick our feed rate on. And you can see our icon turn black. And it's going, there's our target speed up there. And see how it's walking us up to that? So it's running in feed rate now. And it doesn't matter where I had this at to start with, the quadrant position. The minute I click this, it's running. And it's going to stay there until I move, you hear the beep, and it went gray. So I'm traveling 2.4 right now, we're gray here, I hit feed rate, and away it goes. It just starts walking us up, it's nice and easy, according 
into the crop load and it's going to walk us up to our four mile an hour. So we're cru cruising around right now and you can tell because our icon turned black up there. Um, it doesn't do any good to push the button again to disengage. Again, the only way we can disengage it is by pull the handle back or forward. It beeps at you to tell you, hey, I just kicked you out of feed rate. You're running on your own. We want it engaged again. It turns black and your speed starts taking off again. And that's what I recommend. When you're dumping on the go or getting ready to, just bump the stick a little bit. Beeps, you know you're at it. You, can, you don't even have to look over there. You can be looking at your auger and your cart, getting that figured up, ready for that. The minute your cart's full and you're moving on again, you just reach up here above the auto guide or auto steer button, hit that, and away it goes again. It does not matter where your uh, quadrant lever's at. One other item now, we're running along. So again, as we're running along here, um, feed rate's on, we're in automatic crop settings. I reach up here, I hit automation. Again, it doesn't totally work. We switch to an A. Um, without a load the machine, it's not real sure what it wants to do because it's really based in the, uh, the automation settings off of what it sees off of loss sensors in the ca grain camera. So with an empty machine, um, it's at kind of a disadvantage, but it gives you an idea uh, of what we've got going on that way. Here it will tell you um, that little icon up there. If we click on it, um, it's telling us if we're not up to our speed, in this case we are, but let's say we're going 3.5 and we're set at 4. If we click on that icon, it's going to tell you why. It's basically going to say the engine load or the ground drive load is different or not allowing us to reach higher speed. This one's just saying, hey, you got nothing to complain about. You wanted 4, you got 4. All right, so hopefully that gives you just a good overview of the three things, again, feed rate control, automatic crop settings, and automation. And the way I've been recommending to our customers in this area of how to set this up, um, again, it, just so you've got a kind of a reference, you can pull this video up uh, on your phone when you're out in the field. That's my ultimate goal. Um, and whenever we do our clinics and things, it's great to go over this stuff, but I know as a student in classes, it's hard to remember everything that's been presented. That's why I wanted to get this stuff on the video clip where you can actually pull it up on your phone when you're out in the field, maybe run through it, get a rough idea what's going on, and then you can always get a hold of your local Red Power store if you've got some further questions on what we're going through. But as I talk about automation, we need to understand what pieces and parts help make it work. And we'll, we're going to delve into that. Basically, we have about four or five components, two of them that have been on there before, a couple new ones they've added in. But with automation, why do I set the ranges the way I do? Well, what I have noticed with it is if we go in and just turn on, let it do whatever, it typically will move things around more than it needs to. And sometimes it ends up chasing its tail. And one other thing I've noticed with it, a lot of times its first reaction is just slow the machine down, slow the machine down. Well, that's great in a way. Uh, and perhaps if we're just worried about maybe grain quality or something, that works. But if you're looking at the big picture and trying to get productivity and get anything done, that's not always the answer. So that's again why I, a lot of times I set the ranges the way I do, uh, let feed rate control do its portion, and then make automation do what it's supposed to. That way it's you know keeping your productivity up, keeping everything moving, using the sensors, uh, making some fine tune adjustments to the settings, the good manual settings that you've already got in the system. So now we'll take a look at the pieces and parts that make up automation. Um, in cab cane or cage vein adjust. So this is one other thing that's going to be working as automation is it's going to move this back and forth. Now one other component right over here that actually isn't working with us. If you look at this, this is our concave adjust. Con that's one thing we'll have to remember when we're using automation is the concave only moves if you adjust it. This is not tied into automation. Um, this is separate and that does rely on, so automation really relies on you being able to get your concave set basically where it needs to be. Otherwise the rest of the system is gonna really struggle to get where it needs to. So if our concave is way, way off, it's gonna try to change some things like rotor speed's another element of automation. It can change that up and down. And of course that's back on the uh, CVT drive. But, and then also the clean fan's another element changing the speed of that. 
But concave adjustment is still manual, even with automation. That's a very key point we want to remember, that we got to get a good job of setting our concave um, to make automation work correctly. Now, that's 1.2, where I always say we need a good set of manual, get our machine set to our satisfaction, then we add automation into it. So when we talk about automation also, here is our rotor loss sensor, very similar to what we've had for years uh, past. They've kind of changed the location or the mount of it lately. But again, this is another element that automation is using to determine what needs to move when and where. As we talk about automation in the back area of this combine, what, do we, what components are actually helping our automation work? Well, we've got a couple. We've got the, the sounding board that we've always had for group sieve loss right here, but then they've added in these air pressure sensors on either side. So it's trying to measure the differential in air pressure for either side of the sieve, trying to understand whether we have a decent distribution right to left. Um, so that's just a couple of components in this area that are helping determine automation, what move it needs to make next. For automation, this is the green camera. So what its job is, if we're using automation, especially the green quality strategy, it's looking at the quality of the grain for broken grain and also material other than grain going up the elevator. Um, so important part, occasionally we do need to clean this lens off if we're using that. Um, damp rag or something, you don't want to have anything real abrasive and scratch this up. But again, mounts on the back side, or I should say the inside of the clean grain elevator, held in place with these two pins. So, another element of automation. Hey, thanks everyone for watching. This brings us to the end of this video segment. I hope you found it to be beneficial. Um, if you would like to see more in this video series, um, by all means, go to the Red Power Team website, which is, of course, at redpowerteam.com. Navigate up to that video icon at the top, and from there, it'll bring up the menu of the rest of the videos that you can watch, uh, whichever ones you find interesting. Thank you.